everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you had a lovely celebration of the christmas and new years which already feels um quite uh quite a while ago but anyway happy new year since this is my first video today i thought as the first video i'd like to share my color palettes so the colors that i use in different mediums whether it's watercolor acrylic paint or things like um, oil sticks anything that i love to use to create abstract paintings but as well as my other love for botanical art and also fashion illustration so i picked out colors that i commonly use and initially this has been a 42 color uh, situation or actually 41 and i downsized to now 32 colors which are really my all-time favorite colors so these colors don't just represent uh, love for the pencils which they do but also uh, translates into my other mediums. I hope that makes sense. So this video initially has been inspired by Sandy Haster's video on her favorite colors, um, colored pencils, and I found it so nice to just look through what color she likes to use and it really made me think about how my own color palette has developed over the years, especially since I started this channel. And colors like turquoises I would use in the past, not very much now, especially if I'm creating abstract paintings. I don't feel connected to the color in large areas. I would use turquoise in smaller details and a little accents here and there, but not sort of um, in, in a larger area. However, the rest of the colors I would really comfortably use as a focal point in my art. So let's start by swatching them out. For my sketchbook today, I'm using the um, art creations. I ordered this sketchbook during the holidays and I already had a couple and I featured this one before, so this is the same sketchbook, Talents Art Creations, and they are great value sketchbooks because you get so many pages, I think you get 80 sheets in them. Um, usually I go for white and textured paper, this is very smooth and it's off-white, so it's slightly creamy, but it makes it a great paper for pencils. Pencils layer beautifully on this paper, they swatch out beautifully and so I thought that would be great for that matter. This format has been recommended by Sandy I think in the same video and actually the A5 format is what I commonly use for sketchbooks except for one sketchbook which is the Strathmore. Uh, mixed media. I like it a uh, slightly bigger, but otherwise pretty much most of my sketchbooks are A5 and so this is smaller than A5. It's more narrow. The actual sizing is here, 13 by 21 centimeters and it's acid free. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great for starting and experimenting without being intimidated. Larger sketchbooks, especially for beginners, can be intimidating. So in terms of mediums that can be used here, it goes from pencils, charcoal, chalk, graphite, crayon, ink, all the way up to watercolor. I wouldn't recommend using very watery washes on this paper because it is only 140 GSM but with minimal water you can get away using watercolors. So let's start the swatching. First color we have here is a juicy green color and it's Apple Green by Holbein. So this is a beautiful color if you want that sort of nice green apple color without it being too acidic. As you will notice through most of my colors here, they're slightly muted with the exception probably of 
or one or two colours. The rest of them have that lovely kind of toned down uh, contemporary aesthetic. I'm going to get my brush ready for getting rid of those uh, cramps. So next one we have Luminance and this is by Karen Dash. I have two types of pencils by Karen Dash. Here we have got the Museum Aquarelle, which is a watercolor pencil, and we have the regular colored pencil. You will notice me sometimes doubling in those pencils because they are just um, really interesting to work with full opacity versus a watercolor effect. Um, some colors are really um, a beautiful combos and others are slightly mismatched in terms of tone, just slightly, and I will talk you through those anyway. So this is a spring green. So this is not muted, it's juicy. <laughs> Then we have Holbein Chartreuse Green, again, not muted at all. Beautiful, you can see. Love for this particular pencil from the shortness of it. Then we have Cadmium Yellow Lemon, and this is a polychromos pencil by Faber-Castell. You'll notice I don't have that many polychromos pencils here. I think only two, and the reason being is I love their colors, but the hardness of them is something that I don't enjoy working with. I prefer my pencils to be softer, hence um, I absolutely love the Luminance and Durban's uh, drawing pencils are my kind of top favorite. I also love Holbein's, but Holbein's don't layer very well, I found, compared to Luminance or Durban's. Okay, so now we're getting into that spectrum of muted color. So this is olive yellow by Luminance. Then we have olive yellow and this is a Holbein. So you'll see they are different. So the previous is more green and this is more muted. Then this one is the watercolor pencil looks gorgeous on its own but watch what happens when we add a little bit of water it just lifts the whole color it makes it livelier even more luminous i find it has that beautiful glow to it i will give you a close-up slightly later maybe i'll just bring you in closer just a touch like so and then we have next color which is faber castell polychromos in green gold so this is a lovely kind of mustard yellow muted moody color next one we have is green ochre by luminance so i'd say this one has a bit more yellow to it and this one has maybe slightly more deeper tone with more green to it just a touch but they're different enough for me to love both of them then we have again the museum aquarelle pencil in green ochre so this is green ochre and then here's a green ochre this is the same color like i said before lovely combo in terms of opacity and you can see the colors are pretty identical but if I wanted to turn this into a watercolor effect I can do that then we have mustard by Holbein so this is even more yellow than this color here Now we will start going into yellows and you'll see my yellows are again quite muted so I could argue this is kind of like a yellow that I like to use or in place of a yellow. This is another yellow that is stunning and it's called Indian yellow. Beautifully muted and has that 
lovely gorgeous color to it. Golden Sun by Derwent Lightfast. Another fantastic muted honey kind of yellowish orange. It has a beautiful transparency to it in the sense that you can create lighter washes and have this deeper. It's almost like there's a color underneath that's glowing, similar to the apricot, also by Derwent Lightfast. So gorgeous kind of apricot jam, something that you would cook down on a hob for a long time and it becomes caramelized. So that's the color here. Then we have Durban Drawing Pencil. This is Mars Orange. Very opaque, solid color. So if here you can see streaks of kind of different layers of the same color, but different tones perhaps um, in the swatches. This is solid, very solid, very opaque. And it's the softest pencil out of all of them. San Juin. Another Dervant drawing pencil. So this is slightly pinkier um, version of the previous column. All right, so they're looking absolutely delicious. Let's start with the next draw of colors. So we have got now the luminance which is a natural russet i believe this is one of the newer colors that have been added to the range so it's also very very opaque very similar in the feeling to the derwent drawing pencils that we just swatched over here and it's got great opacity and depth to it but it's deeper than the previous colors then we're going into kind of sort of reds. This is a strawberry. Very interesting. Like a um, pinky, muted, warm, red, orange type of a color. Very complex, very unique. Then we have Crimson by Holbein. So this is a similar color, but cooler and warmer versions of it. Next one is Burgundy, again by Holbein. So now we're entering the plum colors. I love this color, it's really, really beautiful. Next one is Dark Plum. This is another watercolor pencil, Museum Aquarelle. This is the deepest of them, if you don't consider the darker colors later on. It is gorgeous. Really, really beautiful. I love these um, watercolor pencils. They really are special. The pigment in, in the lead, it's literally like watercolor out of a pencil. Then we have Ash Rose Holbein. Beautiful, kind of like a, like a muted pink, I'd say. Then we have Shell Pink, which is a very light pink. And the next one is Sepia 10%, another fantastic color. Really love it. It's like a taupe. So it's a perfect taupey color, very milky. Very gorgeous. I have this pencil. So the Sepia 10% in the pencil version, but it's not the same thing. And I don't love the color as much. And then we have Payne's Grey 30%. So now we're hitting the grey colours. Uh, 
Next one is Payne's Great 60%. and Payne's Grey. And then we have these dark intense colours. These are pencils I use in place of black, so generally I don't like like a solid flat black. I like them to have a little bit of blue in there, so this is a dark indigo. It's almost black but not quite you still can see it's a dark blue color probably not right now you can't from that distance but i can see it here and i will show you close-ups then we have also Durban light fast midnight black again this is not a black yet it's a more deeper blue black and i have something that's even more intense than that <laughs> and this is you can see how short it is one of my most used colors it's the luminance dark indigo i already have a few backups it's just like butter it gives you quite a few crumbs because it's just so smooth you can see how the nib just shapes as you draw with it uh, but it's gorgeous you can see sort of how you thought it's it was pretty dark over here and then it just got even darker but if I am in the mood for that solid solid black I would highly recommend the Derwent drawing ivory black also they're white which is technically not a color so I'm not including it Chinese white is the whitest of the white. I have a video which I'll try to link up here comparing all of the pencils, all of the whites. Um, and this one was like the best in my view. So this is super, super black and it doesn't have any um, tint to it. It's as black as it gets. So let's have a look at them. We've got all the delicious, yummy greens right here. And then continuing into these gorgeous gold greens and oranges and reds, sort of burnt siennas type of color. Start over here and another one here and then we go into these reds and plums and pinks and the greys and the dark colors so that's my color palette so i thought what i will do quickly is um explain to you why my color palette is actually quite flowy so if you look at it there is really i'd say one two three probably around four color groups in here just on a quick glance but the color group has these colors which extend and they almost blend into one another and that is because i like to work with analogous color palettes and to me this is where I get the joy out of creating. So I just wanted to show you what happens when I create with a color palette like this. So I'm just going to do a quick sketch and show you what it would be like creating with analogous color palette. So I just quickly doodled a little bit of um, like a botanical design, something inspired by leafage or succulents. And what I'm going to show you is, for instance, how this would translate into my art. So let's start with the first color. And this is the Apple Green by Holbein. And I'm just going to color in really simply 
um, each segment of this illustration using these colors and then show you what it looks like. So analogous colors are those that are close to one another. If you look at a color wheel, it would be, for example, uh, yellow next to a green, so like here. But if you stretch these colors out and make them blend into one another, this is what you would get, a lovely analogous color palette. And then you can throw in a contrasting color, which would be opposite and you would have this, you know, like a pop. So for instance, here we have got this sort of purplish, which would be a plum color in my case, or a dark blue. And visually it would be quite harmonious. So I'm just going to continue coloring in each petal. So this is now going to have a large popping color because you can see the majority has been green so far. So this is now going into this lovely um, warm toasty orange color. I'm just going to continue pencil by pencil so you could leave it at that if you didn't want to go into this region so basically I'm moving on to here now right so if you didn't want to have that and you wanted to stay within the green Watch what I'm going to do now. I'm going to look at these colors and think, which color do I want to repeat again? So I'd say, let's do this one here. So we're going to go back into this color and possibly something lighter like this color again. And what else do we have here? Maybe one of these. That was a good one. And like, like a yellow to lift it up again. There we go. So, what you have here is a range of analogous colors this is still analogous because it moved into it gradually but because there is difference between here and there there's a big jump it's going to look like it's creating a